friends! Welcome back to the Tiny House Concierge. My name is Alaska. I am your Tiny House Concierge. And today I'm going to tell you the story of how I ended up in a tiny house. Real quick, this is a new channel, so if you would be so awesome and hit the like button, that's very much appreciated. Additionally, if you're feeling crazy and want to be my first subscriber, even my mother has not subscribed. So, if you are the first, thank you and I high five you through the internet. All right, story time. So once upon a time, long ago and far away, several years ago in Orange County, California, I, I was an assistant manager of a gym. And at that time, my half of the rent was 56% of my take home pay. And my life dream was to be a writer. And <laughs> the closer I got to 30, the more I was like, wow. An editor at Random House better come through and skyrocket my book to fame, otherwise I don't have a retirement plan. And friends, I started to panic. Like, the pressure became crushing. And so I'll keep it really, I want to make this a short video. So long story short, I tore my life apart looking for another way. I looked at how I spent my time, my money and my energy. I made a crazy amount of spreadsheets. I ended up getting a real estate license and I did a massive deep dive on housing, alternative lifestyles and, you know, different ways to move through life. And I came to one major conclusion and that was that housing was my biggest expense. So therefore housing was my biggest opportunity to change the way that my life is unfolding. So if you think of it this way, we spend most of our time at work to get money. And then we turn around and spend most of our money on housing. So my thinking was like, if I can somehow magically not have to pay for housing, I kind of break the time money conundrum over here that, that was keeping me stuck. And to, to frame it just in one more way, like, if I had, again, magically been able to make my housing payment non-existent, I would have given myself a 56% raise at the gym, like overnight. And that number was just so stupidly high. I was just like, well, I'm not going to try to get a raise at work. Like, screw that. Like, I'm going to try to focus on my housing problem. So anyway, again, making a long story short here, but I did a massive deep dive. I did a ton of research. And I came to the conclusion that I was going to purchase 25 rental properties. And my plan was that I would purchase properties that would cash flow 200 a month after the mortgage, taxes, insurance, and expenses had been paid. And that was not only going to give me a salary that would allow me to be a writer and be home with my family and, you know, participate in community in ways that I found meaningful, but it was also going to provide a retirement plan. Right? Everybody with me? So I started trying to buy houses and it was a good plan. Like I, I do think it was a good plan. However, it's just not how my life worked out. So shortly after I started trying to buy houses, I ended up getting divorced. I ended up leaving California. I moved back to home to Alaska. That is my legal name. I am from there. And I'm working for a cleaning company and trying to figure out where to go next in the world. And then that's when I realized how sick my sister actually was. So my sister, I, I knew that my sister had been battling autoimmune complications for, for a long time. Uh, but around that time, it started becoming apparent to me that she might not actually make it. And so in kind of a last ditch effort to save her life, um, my mom, my sister and I all moved to Kansas to pursue treatment and my mom bought a house. I moved into my mom's basement and I became a full-time caregiver for my sister. And friends, that's when it started to hit me that while if she died, that would be devastating. If she lived, the reality that I could become a lifetime caregiver for someone with extensive medical needs was like hitting me right in the face. 
And so I had twice the reason to like make this plan work. So every afternoon I would pick a, pick a neighborhood in Wichita and I would go out and I would literally knock on doors and be like, do you want to sell me your house? Do you know anybody that wants to sell me their house? Um, and just nothing worked out. Like, I made offers, but, like, like, ah, the, the roof would be bad, and it would throw the numbers, or I would get outbid, or there was a title issue. Like, for the life of me, I could not buy an actual house. And then, uh... So I was super depressed and I got online to like look at tiny houses and make myself feel better because they're cute and they do that. And <laughs> friends, that's when I found the tiny house of peace. And I'm looking at this house online and I'm realizing that this kind of solves all of the problems that I have. It was a house that I could afford. It was a house that I could move for my sister's treatment. It was a house that I could later move to an expensive real estate market because remember, I'm a realtor, which would allow me to earn a higher income while keeping my expenses low so that I could care for my sister. It would solve my biggest expense, which was, you know, the thing keeping me trapped and keeping me from pursuing my life as a writer. And finally, as I'm swiping through these pictures, I realize that there is a sauna in the bathroom. I'm kind of getting goosebumps because, okay, so I know a sauna is like a swanky addition and it's cool, but a sauna was a major piece of my sister's treatment. For whatever reason, every afternoon she'd go in the sauna and when she came out, she would come back to life a little bit. And I knew that the sauna was imperative. So anyway, I saw this house. I was like, this is my house. I get on the phone with the owner and I'm like, you don't understand. This is my house. Like I'm halfway to Texas right now. And <laughs> she probably thought I was crazy, but I mean, she went with it and shout out to Molly and Ken. And so, yeah, long story short, I just bought it. Uh, well, I bought it a year ago and my sister has since started going into remission. That being said, we still don't know if she's going to work or, or what the future holds or, or anything. There's still so much in the world that is up in the air. But I have so much peace. Oh, I'm not going to cry on YouTube. Ah, for the first time in my life, it actually feels like the world might be okay. Like there's a plan that makes sense. Like it's life is condensed down enough that it feels manageable. And so while I don't know what happens next in this story, I'm exceedingly grateful that I found the house to help me get to wherever I need to go. So it wasn't plan A, but it was the best possible scenario. Super grateful to live in the tiny house of peace. Again, my name is Alaska. This is the tiny house concierge. If you've not liked it yet, please do. If you would subscribe, you are my hero, and I will see you in the next video.